In this week's EV news, more price rises for public charging, Citroen reach a thousand UK reservations for a May, and has the UK fuel crisis driven a surge in UK electric vehicle interest? Welcome back to another EV news, a little bit later than scheduled but we got there in the end. Please click the like button to try and convince YouTube that this video is worth watching and if you're new here please subscribe as well. I've just given away a 10 meter charging cable to one lucky subscriber in a recent giveaway and I'm definitely intending on having more like that in the future so please make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on and that way you won't miss out. First up some not so positive news. Genie Point have joined the long list of public charging operators to announce price increases and this time they're not just blaming HMRC's clarification of the VAT rules. Let's take a look at this announcement that they've sent to all registered customers. Dear Genie Point driver, I'm writing to let you know of some upcoming changes to the price you will pay to charge on the public Genie Point network. From the 15th of October 2021 that the registered Genie Point driver price and the guest slash contactless driver price will increase to 42 pence per kilowatt hour. Over the past few months there has been an unprecedented rise in energy prices globally which has affected many businesses. As a result of this increase the price of the electricity used to power the Genie Point network has also gone up. In comparison to last year our electricity costs have more than doubled. Despite the price rises within the energy market this year, we have done all we can to hold off from passing this cost on to you. Whilst other networks increased their prices this summer, we did not increase the prices on the Genie Point network. Unfortunately, the cost of our energy has continued to increase and we are unable to continue to provide the service that we want for our customers without having to increase the price of charging on our network. This means that on the 15th of October, we will be increasing the price for both our registered and guest drivers to 42 pence per kilowatt hour. We have spent a lot of time over the past few weeks looking at how we could avoid passing the price increase on to our customers who we know have all been impacted by increasing costs in recent months, including making some tough decisions on how we manage our own costs. Unfortunately, the scale of electricity price rises means we now have to change our prices. We wish we could avoid increasing our prices, but this price change will mean that we can continue to provide you with access to our growing network and commit to improving our services to you. We have made some important improvements in our network this year, including simplifying our prices, launching the rollout of contactless chargers, moving to pay-as-you-go, and growing our customer service team. We want to continue to make changes so that we can improve the charging experience for all of our drivers and improve the reliability of our network. Now, this was inevitable really, but I think more to bring themselves in line with the other networks, rather than being directly driven to wholesale prices, if you ask me. The real problem I have with it is that Genie Point are most, one of the most unreliable, difficult to use networks out there in my experience. Their app is clunky and horrible and the hardware they're using isn't much better. I could never get one of their chargers to charge my MG at more than about 24 kilowatts, no matter how many I tried. It's a long running software issue with their chargers they know about, they've been trying to resolve but how much effort they've been putting in certainly isn't clear. There are far better charging options out there for most EV drivers, so I'd only tend to use them if I'm absolutely desperate. The biggest problem with these networks all roughly price matching each other, although at 42 pence Genie Point are actually one of the most expensive behind Ionity of course, is that reliability will start to become a key factor. Why would I use these clowns when I can use Instavolt which is faster, more reliable and marginally cheaper? That's not the case everywhere in the country, of course. You might find somewhere where Genie Point's your only option. But as networks expand, you'll increasingly have a choice of suppliers. And you're going to base that choice on reliability and availability. Now, I know this news is going to get both the pro and anti-EV folks frothing a bit. You've got the, oh my god, I can charge it 5 pence per kilowatt hour at home, so 42 pence is an absolute fortune crowd on one side of the argument. And you've got the, oh, I told you it would get more expensive folks on the other. Fine froth away but remember very few drivers will use rapid chargers like this as their only source of charging. I know that there's the odd edge case for people that do but even people that don't have home charging what should hopefully have access to other destination chargers which are either cheaper or free in some cases which means your average cost per mile is a lot lower than what is represented by rapids. Next up 
Citroen announced that there's been a healthy amount of interest in ME since they opened reservations. Over a thousand people have placed a refundable reservation with them to try and secure one, including myself, as I told you in a recent video. Let's take a look at the press release from Citroen UK. The landmark figure of 1,000 ME reservations has just been reached in the UK less than two weeks after the vehicle became available to reserve online. To be precise, a total of 1,130 reservations have been received since the Citroen.co.uk website began accepting £250 refundable reservation fees for Citroen ME in the UK. And that's not all. 14,000 individuals have now registered their interest in the UK. That's up 2,000 from when the reservations became available. Those still interested in joining the queue to secure their very own AMI are invited to do so online with a £250 refundable reservation fee ahead of the launch in spring 2022. All customers are reminded that AMI will be adapted for the UK market but will remain left-hand drive. One significant benefit of the left-hand drive configuration when being driven in the UK is that it will allow for a curbside exit from the vehicle for the driver when parking at the roadside in a city centre. A true breakthrough from Citroen, AMI is a daring experience to the challenges faced in today's cities and urban environments. As a 100% electric vehicle, AMI emits zero emissions in use and has a 5.5 kilowatt hour battery that recharges in just three hours. With a range of 46 miles and a top speed of 28 miles per hour, AMI is a modern solution that delivers on Citroen's promise to provide affordable and clean mobility solutions for all. AMI's zero emission credentials ensure it is exempt from congestion and ultra low emission zone charges, with London's ULEZ due to be extended in October 2021, and other cities looking to introduce similar measures, AMI is a future-proof solution to urban mobility in many parts of the UK. UK pricing and supply arrangements will be communicated in due course. <laughs> when I was reading this, I thought the bit about it being left-hand drive being advantageous was quite funny. They can't be arsed making it right-hand drive, so let's try and sell it as a benefit. PR at its finest. I've noticed quite a lot of discussion about this little car since its announcement that it was coming to the UK, and my video announcing that I'm one of the first in the queue for one. What's fairly clear to me, I think, is you either get it or you don't. If you're used to driving around town two and a half tonnes of leather-clad SUV, then you're probably not going to be interested in a little quadricycle made from plastic, monkey metal, hopes and dreams. I get that, but broaden your mind a little bit. It's a fantastic little thing and it's got the ability to provide zero emissions mobility for a section of the market that would otherwise be stuck in something like a knacker old leaf. And supply of those isn't going to be around forever, is it? The potential for it to become cheap personal mobility in cities where you rent it by the hour is huge and I'm hoping that we see schemes like that emerge in the UK once they're widely available. I'm not sure we'll necessarily see Citroen launch their own scheme here, but who knows what the future holds. And finally, has the UK fuel crisis driven a rise in interest about electric cars? This article in The Guardian certainly seems to think so. As petrol stations in part of the UK started running out of fuel on Friday, business at Martin Miller's electric car dealership in Guildford started soaring. After what ended up being his company EV Expert's busiest day ever, interest does not appear to be dying down. This week, the diary is booked up with test drives and the business is low on stock. People buy electric cars for environmental reasons, for cost-saving reasons, and because the technology is great, he said. This Friday was one of those moments where people said, do you know what, this is a sign that we need to go electric. While scenes of chaos play out at petrol stations across the country amid shortages, for many electric vehicle dealers, the fuel crisis has led to an unexpected surge of inquiries and sales. EVA England, a non-profit representing new and prospective EV drivers, reports a rise in electric car inquiries and an interest EV dealers, particularly in the last week. Saturday was bonkers, but Friday even surpassed that. It was very strange, said Miller, who founded his company four years ago. I've now got trade-in cars with no petrol to move them. Along with the existing factors such as the expansion of London's ULEZ, the fuel crisis has proved to be another trigger point, he said. People were using it as, this is the moment where I'm not going to be able to put this off any longer. The EV market is no longer the preserve of innovators and early adopters, he said, where the, the most popular models being the Nissan Leaf, the Volkswagen ID3 and the Jaguar I-Pace. The owner of Electric Cars UK in Leyland, Lancashire, said that as a small business it would take a few months to feel the knock-on effect of the fuel crisis on sales. 
But every time there are problems with petrol or diesel, he said, that acted as one more tick for people making that transition to electric cars. He said a lot of electric car owners will be chuffed to bits this last week being able to plug in the cars at home. And as an EV driver himself, he admitted feeling a little bit smug as he drove past queues of 20 plus cars outside petrol stations over the weekend in his Tesla. Now, as I said in the last news video, we don't think we need to rein the smog in a little bit, but okay. Matt Cleveley, the owner of Cleveley Electric Vehicles in Cheltenham, which specialises in used EVs, had a surge of inquiries over the weekend and on Monday morning from customers citing the fuel crisis as a reason for switching to electric. He expects enthusiasm to continue rising, with petrol shortages adding fuel to the fire. <laughs> Although he feels sorry for non-EV drivers who have been unable to get fuel, he said as an electric car owner it was very nice not to have to worry about where to get petrol at the weekend. It's very convenient that we've been able to just charge up on the driveway. It's one of the biggest pros of having an electric vehicle. I don't think anybody can argue with that. The National Franchise Dealers Association also said that multiple dealers have reported a spike in EV inquiries since the start of the crisis. The Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders reported bumper growth in the sale of plug-in cars in July, with battery electric vehicles comprising 9% of sales. Plug-in hybrids accounted for 8% of sales and hybrid electric vehicles nearly 12%. Also in July, more electric vehicles were registered than diesel for the second consecutive month. Now I think this was a given really. People explore the alternatives when what they're used to is in jeopardy. Does it necessarily mean the EV adoption will, will rise as a result directly of the fuel crisis? I don't think so. I'm not sure I believe that a short term fuel supply issue will actually make people suddenly decide to switch. But it might well sway some people that were on the fence. It can only be a good thing although maybe not if you're competing for that short supply of certain new car models out there. That's all we've got time for this week. I definitely welcome your thoughts in the comments, as always. Many thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.